Welcome to part seven of the advanced Revit course. In this lesson, we're going to be creating some door and window tags and adding them to our views. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. Next up, we're gonna start looking at adding door and window tags. Tags in Revit are used to identify different elements and take information out of elements that are modeled inside your Revit project. It's a smarter way of working inside of Revit because it's taking that BIM, that information part of your model, taking notes and annotations from that, and it does it in a way that isn't using dummy text or the text tool, which can often lead to a lot of mistakes in your projects or discrepancies between what you've modeled and then what you've written as your text. So using tags is a way to minimize that. Tags are considered smart because they're taking the parametric values from your model and using that to define the annotations. For example, you could put a text note over every door saying door one, door two, door three, etc. But then what happens if you want to then reference that door in a window schedule or on an elevation, that tag isn't going to show or that annotation isn't going to show on those other views because you've only used dummy text on that ground floor plan view in this case. But if you want that to show on every single drawing throughout your model, that's where you can tag it and you can take that information, that parametric information from the actual model and use that as the annotation value. In Revit, there are two types of tags. You've got categorical tags and then keynote tags. If we go to the annotate tab, that's where you'll find them. We can tag by a category. So you can tag doors or windows or walls, or you can tag floors. You can tag any type of different category using the tag by a category tool. But then we've also got these things called keynotes. For this, we're going to be using the tag by category. So if we use the tag by category tool up the top here, what you might need to do is load in a window or door tag. And as you can see, we've already got one set up here. In the options, you're gonna see that we're creating a horizontal tag. And what we wanna do is uncheck the leader. We don't need the leader on it. And the rest of the settings are fine. But now you can see that we can tag each door and each window, and it's going to give it a number based off of that information inside of that model. So at the moment, you can see that this door is starting from the entrance. It's door one, two, three, four is up here for some reason, and then it goes to five here, and then six, seven, it's kind of jumping all over the place. So we'll need to change these values. So where is Revit grabbing these numbers from? These numbers are actually assigned to these doors and they are the mark of the door. If we click on that door that we've placed the tag on, you're gonna see there's a mark under identity data in the properties panel. So this mark is mark six, which means it's door six. If you go over to the door next to it, it's going to be mark seven. So it's showing as door seven. This one is mark four and so forth. It's an instance based parameter that's been placed on each door. So what we can do, we can either select the actual tag and then select that parameter and then change that number. Say if we wanted that to be nine, that can change that mark and it will also change in the model. So that's why it's really smart. I'm just gonna undo that because we don't want to have duplicates, but what we can do is actually change these. And we kind of want it to have some sort of systematization to it. So we want door one in the top left and then moving clockwise around the building, we want it to be going sequentially in order. So I'm gonna make this door one, and you're gonna see that there are duplicates. If we make this one here, door two, it has a duplicate there as well, but that's fine. We can continue to go around and change these. That's door three, this is door four. This here can be door five and six, seven, eight, nine, and so forth but we kind of want this to show as door one. We might want it to say D.01 because how do we know that's a door tag? We don't. This is just the standard tag that comes out of the box with Revit. What we can actually do is change this tag. Similarly to what we did with the room tag, we can actually edit that family. So I'm gonna come up to the modify tab and click on edit family. Now you're gonna see that this is the tag in its pure form. 
and it's also a label similarly to what we had with the room tags. So if we edit this label, we want to give it a prefix. We want it to show as door. I'm going to have a point and then it will be whatever value is that door. And you can see this is taking the parameter mark and we're creating a tag from that parameter. So we'll go ahead and apply that and click OK. If we load this into the project, what we can do is kind of bring some of these out so they're a bit more legible. And so I can just move the tags, but it's not going to move what they're associated to. Now we can also tag windows as well. And this is going to use a different family tag. But if we go to the annotate tab and tag by category, we can't really see any windows in this ground floor view. Um, but I do know there's a couple windows here, which are just a little bit higher in the view range. But where you can go ahead and place these door or these window tags in and you'll see that each window tag is going to take that information from that window that per, that mark parameter and it's going to automatically generate a window number from that but we've got that same issue where it's not showing say w dot as a prefix we want to know that this is in fact a window tag and that's what it's referring to so we're going to edit that family and do the same thing we're going to select that label edit the label and give it a prefix of w dot and the sample value is fine. If we load this in and we override it, you're going to see that that line is now too small. So if we edit this family again, we're going to have to actually adjust this. I'm just going to change the label sample value to one. And then these lines here are just detail lines. So they can be stretched out or moved as you want. So I'm going to move this maybe out to two mils and then select both of these lines, use the move tool and move this out two mils as well. Now, once we load this in, it should look a lot neat. There we go. And I might just bring all of these out, make sure they line up. You can see that they snap onto a guideline there. And again, we're gonna to want to make sure we label these with the correct number. So here you can see this is referencing mark six, which is why it's Windows six. But if we change this to mark one, it's gonna change both in the information of that model of that element as well as this tag which is really really handy and so this one can be window 2 and this one can be window 3 so all of these tags the door and window tags the the room tags they can all be customized to make them look like how you want them to look if you didn't want these to be rounded off and you wanted them to be pointy like this window tag we can just edit that door tag and then change this to be a different shape so what we can actually do is edit this family select those lines of the window tag, copy it, and then we're gonna bring that over to our door tag. We're just gonna paste it. And what we might actually do is paste aligned to the current. So now we know that that's gonna be exactly the same. We can load this into the project, overwrite that one. Now that's the exact same shape as the window tag. So that's using category based tags. A lot of the parameters from these different categories can be used in these tags. In the next lesson, you'll be introduced to using keynotes and how you can use these to specify different elements within your project. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as 20 hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.